Hey now, hey now, you're listening to a brand new You Need a Hara podcast. Nicholas? All new, all new. That's right, dude. I got to say, my uh, now that I've got Halloween 2 and 3 in front of me, it just feels right. I guess it's numerically they're closer together, but whatever it is, I love it. I love my, uh, I love my I got, Halloween 2 pumpkin. I got my two of my three posters on the way. I, I like that too you got. It's kind of like a mix between that kind of like Australian look, but it's yep. shaped like an American poster. That's good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Yes, sir. Yeah, we are. We're here to talk. What are we here to talk about today, Christian? Uh, sex and death. Yes. No. Um, so we were at the time of this, we were supposed to be doing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 retrospective, part two retrospective, not the movie, the actual timeline stuff that the second Pizzle one, but he's having problems with his internet. So we're professionals. We're rescheduling and we're doing a show that no, Nick, when you did your poll, wasn't this the number two requested? Yes, uh, actually by only <laughs> funny after we did the episode, more votes kept coming in even after it was long gone. And it actually surpassed child's play by 1%. Well, what does that tell you? We're doing the right thing then. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Nick, what's been going on? How's everything been going? You know, things are going, things are going pretty well. You know, can't complain. I'm, I'm, you know, above, above the ground. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a lot of crazy shit going on in the world right now. That's for sure. But, uh, you know, I'm saying hang in I'm there, not... Ukraine, man, hang in yeah. there. For God's yeah. sakes, man. Yo, it sounds like they're hanging in there too. They're really giving it to them. So they're fighting uh, their asses off, man. Yep, good for them. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, all things considered, I'm doing pretty well, man. How 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 are things over in uh, CHH land? Uh, they're okay. I've got AC problems again. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I learned not to give a shit anymore. It just it's life. Life sucks, and then you die. You know the expression. So, yeah. uh, luckily, the weather's great, so I don't need my AC right now. But I think I might be lucky. I've got a guy that I work with that. He said, look, dude, I'm not going to screw you over or anything like that. Cause I got, I got hosed really bad last time and, uh, I'll never call it. It's so funny. I was talking about my, to my dad about this. My dad, it's like, he has re- recomm- he has recommended me two people for stuff. And both times I use these people for various things. They, they completely hosed me and they were completely unprofessional. And it's like, I can't, what am I going to do? Be mad at my dad. But like, I joke with him, like hmm. dad, like you have the worst recommendations ever. He used this AC guy and he's like, he did me right, Christian. But I, I explained to the guy that I work with, who's a licensed AC guy and does all this stuff. And I explained to him what the what these guys did when they came out there to fix my AC. And he's like, dude, th- that is the, what they did was so scummy. I don't need to get into the details because it's boring. But basically, they did not fix anything. They just charged me to, to pump free on in my system. And except they didn't check for a leak, nothing like that. Anyway, they they screwed me. I was telling the guy at work that, and he's rolling his eyes like, oh, Christian, man, they hosed you so freaking bad. And they didn't even fix anything. So I'm. it's funny. I was telling my dad, I was like, dad, I talked to my guy at work, and he says those guys like were completely like, they were just so like crooks. They were horrible what they did to me. He's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bubba. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. But anyway, boring no more shit. advice. Yeah, well, it's like funny. That's my dad. You know, it's like my dad has given me the greatest advice. He's taught me everything I know, but like he has the worst recommendations with cars and air condition ever. The worst. I mean, he it's like he recommends Satan basically to fix my Hey, appliances. some people might be down for that though. So, you know. You sell your soul. Yeah. Um, what else was I gonna say? Uh I am excited to talk about physical media, man, because obviously I have a bunch of it. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. Uh, but hey, this is cool, Nick. This episode of the You Need a Horror podcast is sponsored by the Battle Cat Zone. The Battle Cat Zone is a store on Amazon, and he sells. Check this out. These everybody loves Funko Pops, right? Funko Pops is something everybody has. Even if you're not a Funko Pop person, you've been there, Nick. You've, you whether you love, I'm sure you've got a Michael Myers Funko Pop where you saw it and you oh, said, yeah. "I'm not a Funko Pop guy, but I've got to have that." Yeah. Well. The good people at Battle Cat Zone sent us this bloody case Funko for the Funko Pops. And here's the here's what it looks like. Here's the Leatherface, which was sent to us, obviously, for the Leatherface episodes. Even though it's not in that episode, it's still 
it was for that episode, but here we are. These are the Battle Cat Zone blood cases. You can put your Funko Pops in, and they keep your Funko Pops nice and neat, and the boxes stay in nice, good shape, and uh, they look really cool. And you can also, on the back of this, you can actually take the case out and just display the figure in there. Uh, here's mm -hmm. a little bit about the Battle Cat Zone. They're perfect for horror pops. Put your horror themed, uh, put your horror themed figure in this case that will match its frightening vibe. Our display cases for figures flaunts a reversible bl bloody plastic design, lasting protection. Our figurine display case is compatible with the four inch Funko Pops. Are made of 0.5 millimeter thick PET to keep air or moisture out to protect vinyl figurines from dust. Or fingerprints, no nicks or scratches. Each one in our six pack collector case for figures is individually wrapped with an easy peel film that offers scratch protection so it always looks smooth and brand new. It stays upright. This plastic toy case features a stable base with a two puckle design that won't wobble. It also comes with an automatic lock to ensure that your entire figurine is well protected and it is 100% safe to use. And it's also eco conscious, made from materials that can be recycled. So, thank you. Battle Cat Zone for sponsoring the show with these really cool. I mean, look at that, Nick. How cool! Yeah. Is that? No. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That is yeah. that is quite gnarly. And I'm gonna take some of these. I'm gonna send these to you. That way, you can put your Michael Myers in a oh. beautiful bloody case. Uh, so, if you want to order these guys, go to the video description or check the pinned comment. We will have a link to Battle Cat Zone's Amazon listings for these. So, thank you, Battle Cat Zone. We appreciate you sponsoring the show. Thank you. Thank you. So. Physical media, Nick. Are we talking uh, like we're talking wish lists? We're going to talk about our favorites releases that we have in our collection. Yeah. So it, let's structure it this way, Christian. So I'm looking right now at my list. Just a few things. I've got five titles that I want to see a Blu-ray or 4K of that haven't gotten one yet. I've got three box sets that I want to see this year. And then I've pulled five of my favorite physical media releases that I own in my collection. So however you want to structure it of just individual releases, box sets, and then favorites, what, however you want to do it. Okay. Well, let's start here. Let's start here, man. Like when did you start being, I guess, a, a conscious physical media person? May, 2007. Uh, I believe it was May. It was when the hype for Rob Zombie's Halloween was, at a fever pitch and um, anchor Bay released the Divamax Halloween DVD with the lenticular cover slip case that I still own to this day. And uh, I was excited for Rob Zombie's Halloween. And I saw that at the, at Walmart for 10 bucks and I picked it up. And from that moment forward is when it began. Now, obviously the physical media, well, it's kind of weird. Cause when I was a kid, I did like to have a bunch of VHSs and stuff. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, I, so I guess I've always kind of liked physical media, but Oh seven was really when it clicked for me. And it started with the Halloween movies, obviously, you know, as soon as I got that first one, I was, all right, I need to track down every single one. And, um, then it just branched into horror and just movies in general. Uh, I own a lot in my uh, collection that aren't horror related, but I know a lot of people really just want to hear about the horror. So I mainly just show the horror, but I've got a lot that aren't horror, right. um, but uh, yeah, that's that's when I would say it was it was 2007. And I was one of those guys. I wasn't ordering things online yet because I was still a kid. So in order to the completest I am, I had to have the you know, I had to have Halloween Resurrection on DVD. I had to have it because, you know, I had to have all the Halloween movies. So and I couldn't find it anywhere to buy. Um, Blockbuster had it uh, when Blockbuster was still a thing in 08. And I said, I want to rent it. I had never had intentions of taking that thing back. So I rented it and never took it back. So the DV, the first DVD, actually the only DVD of resurrection I own is still that Blockbuster DVD. So, but yeah, 07, 07 for me. What is it about physical media to you? Like what, what is it that, you love is it and, and be honest do you think that there's a part compulsion nowadays to continue buying movies when you've done it do you like the aesthetic of it like tell me ever like what is it in a nutshell but or can you it, not really put it in a nutshell no no i can it's a little bit of everything that you're mentioning i mean part of it i'm somebody that like i actually diagnosed ocd so i'm very obsessive compulsive over certain things and uh like one of them is 
hand sanitizer. Like I, I'm kind of like a germaphobe and this was before COVID. I've always been kind of like borderline germaphobe. Another one is having to have movies. It, 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 it doesn't matter if I can ever watch the edition, if it's region locked, if it's beat to shit, it doesn't matter. I have to have it. Like part of me is just like, I have to have this when I see it. So it's, it's a mixture of all that. And it's the aesthetic. I mean, there's nothing better to me. Although when you really think about it and you look at your shelves and you're like, God damn, how much money I have poured into these, but it's worth it because it makes you really happy when you see those shelves just full of movies. And then you can pick some gems out that are just like, the art is amazing. But when I was younger, it was about the bonus features. That was what got me with physical media. I wanted the com audio commentaries. I wanted the behind the scenes featurettes. I was big into that. I, I still am, but I think that's where it really started. So the answer to your question is it's a little bit of everything. I would attribute it to all four of those things, really. I, yeah. One way I kind of, I, I try to make sense of the way to explain this in my head is for, for the average person, it's like if you if you go online or if you stream a movie that you really like and you like it, for the average person, it's like that's good enough. It's like I watched this movie and I, and I liked it, right? There's something about being a physical media collector. It's like when you watch a movie that you like online, for instance, The Ritual on Netflix was a really cool, really cool Blair Witch-esque type movie. Yep. Once I saw the movie and I enjoyed it, my it's like almost like my way of showing my appreciation for the film is like having to own it. It's like my way of saying like good job or it, it, you know what I mean? Like there's something it's, it's like if I see a movie I like, I have to go out and buy it. Yes, you're validating the fact that this was good. You deserve to have a place on my shelf, basically saying I will watch you again. I will like you. I will watch this movie again. But also one thing people don't take into account enough sometimes is the second life that a movie can have in physical media. We've seen movies get sequels that did not do well at the box office, but did really well with home video sales. They'll get a sequel because of how much money the physical media, uh, uh, generated the the biggest example I can think of that is House of a Thousand Corpses because Universal had shelved that movie for God knows how long they never were going to put it out Lionsgate says screw it we'll put it out almost no fanfare no promotion it barely does anything at the box office it comes out on DVD and Rob Zombie fans buy the shit out of it and it gets this cult following and Lionsgate comes to him and goes well you got to make another one now so we got Devil's Rejects because of that. So again, it's it the box office is in everything. You know, if you want to support a movie and you weren't able to make it to the theater or you just didn't know at the time that you wanted to see it and you go ahead and watch it, you're like, damn, that was good. Show your support by buying that thing. So that's that's a big component of it. That, I'm so glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. there, there are there are some beautiful examples of the power of physical media, especially back in the day. Um well, obviously, you would say trick or treat is the same way, right? Yeah. Trick or treat oh, yeah. is the biggest ground swelling cult movie in the last, I don't know, 20 years, so to speak. How powerful that movie was on physical. Yeah. And it was enough to get Lionsgate to our legendary to announce a sequel. And the only reason the sequel hasn't been made yet is because the director, Michael Daugherty, has done, has been doing off doing bigger things Krampus, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Like, but. Uh, legendaries made it very clear we want a sequel like right. we want a sequel to trick or treat because of the the whole media life that that movie had it just it was insane yeah you know what's crazy i, I was listening to howard stern about you know a month or so ago and i was watching looking up interviews from like the 2000s eli roth who i love we poke region on region free that we poke fun of eli roth and we say oh the master of horror eli roth and I have fun with that, too. The truth is, I fucking love Eli Roth. I think he's awesome. I think he's made some f awesome movies. I really do. Oh, he has. He talked about Cabin Fever on Howard Stern. And how this was right after Hostel came out. And Hostel was this big thing, right? Quentin Tarantino presents Hostel. Like, Eli was, like, coming up. Eli said that when Cabin Fever came out, on like DVD and all that, like the reviews were so horrible and people were saying, this is the biggest piece of crap I've ever seen, which I like cabin fever. It's very 2000 silly, you know, fun. And, and Eli was like talking about it. He was stone faced. He's like, 
yeah, their views were pretty bad. A lot of people were saying I was, you know, it was like, mind you, this was like the 2000s and stuff. But like Howard was like, yeah, I read that. Like somebody said you were like a retard. That's how bad that movie was and shit like that. Eli goes, well, the movie made 47 million on DVD sales. <laughs> 47 million dollars on DVD sales. I, I couldn't believe it. The sequel Pretty did insane. a lot. He talked about Cabin Fever 2 doing... And then he was talking about Hostel. Mate, Hostel was sh shot for... It was, a, it was a very minor budget film. But Hostel made millions and millions of dollars. Eli Roth has made some of the most profitable low-budget movies I've ever heard of. Uh, so that's an example, too, of, of the power of physical media and... Just getting it out to the the real audience, because I don't know who the hell was watching Cabin Fever when it initially came out, but obviously it was a bunch of jackasses who were expecting, I don't know, fucking Shawshank Redemption or something. You know what I mean? Like, God yeah. damn. No, I know. Yeah. Yep. Another example. This is the craziest example of a movie that tanked at the box office, but did money on physical media and rentals. And it's still it's a franchise that is still going today. Do you want to take a guess at what this is? I was blown away by this. I had no idea it was a flop in the box office. It's Man. it's from the early, early 90s. Leprechaun. Actually, I think Leprechaun did okay at the box office. Certainly soared in VHS sales, but it's a big franchise. It started out as a very big franchise, tanked at the box office, killed it on rentals, still making movies today god part of me wants to say puppet master no think All bigger right. think more think more i'll give you one more guess because i had no idea this was a flop it's it has a big movie star in it mm. when was the first film when did it come Nin out 1990 oh god i don't know i, I don't know tremors Holy shit. I was reading an wow. interview with Kevin Bacon and he talked about Tremors uh, still going on. I mean, they're still making movies. And he said, it's really crazy because that movie tanked. It made three million more, three or four million more than what it cost to make. And then it came out on home video and nobody could keep it on the shelf. Hmm. I mean, nobody keep it on the shelf. And then they just kept pumping them out because it was like printing money. It's crazy. I never. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought about that. Maniac Cop is another example of uh, physical media sales just booming. Uh, the Critters movies, same thing. Critters did okay at the box office. Part two tanked. Actually, I think Critters one did good at the box office. Part two did not do good. It's like it's. I love Critters two, but I think Mick Garris talked about it, saying, you know. It's a good movie, but when like it, Critters was one of those movies that it was just like absolutely nobody asked for a sequel kind of thing. It's like yeah. they made a sequel to a movie just because a movie makes money doesn't necessarily mean like it needs to have a sequel, I guess. But the the irony is like they made four Critters now, but Critters two did so good on physical media sales and rentals they pumped out two more. Actually, there's another one that came out. It was horrible, Critters Attack, but. The power of physical media, especially back then, was remarkable. Just absolutely remarkable. Yeah, so, I mean, guys, if you, you want to help Christian in his plight, go out, buy every edition of Hobgoblins 2 that you can find so we can get a sequel. There is a, well, I think there is a Hobgoblins 2, but it's, there I've is. never. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Go out and buy it so we can get a oh, Hobgoblins okay. 3. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I remember you did a stream once where people would not shut the hell up about hobgoblins just to piss you off. Well, they're you like, realize what's going to happen now that you're bringing it up. Yep, it's gonna, <laughs> they're like talk about hobgoblins, talk about yeah. hobgoblins. All right, Nick. So let's talk about uh, our favorite releases we own. <laughs> Gotta be hobgoblin. first off. What kind of shirt are you wearing? What the hell? What the hell kind of shirt? This is like grass. Uh, no, it's it is a Monet painting, but it's Michael oh Myers. My Here we go Monet. again. Here yeah. we go again. Where do you get this shit? This was at FYE. That's cool. It's a, it's a Monet. It's got Michael on the bridge, and then there's a hand coming up out of the water with a bloody trail. Uh, there's two of them. There's another one. I also, I also own it. I bought both of them there. 
it's uh the you know that old painting the scream painting where the face is like and it's all like starry you know, night yeah yeah it's it's that but it's michael myers standing there with a head in his hand um and i bought i bought both of them because my wife was like you're you're not you have to get them and i'm like yeah, I know I do. So have I you did. seen have you seen the Michael Myers shirt? That's I got it at FYE. It's cool. It's like a it's like a Asian type yes. samurai Michael. I almost bought it. I and love I that one. Like, I, I don't know cuz I don't know. I wanted they had a Sam shirt too. I was going to I was going to get four shirts cuz they were buy one get one half off. But the Sam shirt was sold out and I couldn't settle on a fourth idea. So I was like, I'll just get two cuz there's no point in buying three shirts if you're not just going to get a fourth one. So yeah, I mean, but yeah, yeah. Let, let me ask you this: What is your favorite format? Is it is it VHS? Is it DVD? Is it Blu-ray, 4K? What is your favorite? Personally, yeah, it, it's it. I don't think anything will ever top VHS for me. Um, whether it's the nostalgia, whether it's the fact that these older movies look old on VHS, which is just something that transports me back to my childhood. It's the same way that my favorite medium for music is vinyl. Uh, seeing something in its purest form, I guess. I don't know. You know, if you're talking about presentation wise, it's gotta be 4k. I mean, movies just look pristine in 4k, but personally, I'm a sucker for, for VHS. Do you have any left? Do you have any in your collection still? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. I have all the Halloween, well, the first eight Halloween movies because those are the only ones that got official VHS releases. Um, I have a smattering of things. I have like Goodfellas, The Godfather, The Goonies. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got a, yeah, I've got a handful. Yeah, I, I do too. I've got a, I've got a pretty little, nice little stack of them. But uh, I think Blu-ray is my favorite. And then it's it's either Blu-ray or Laserdisc, but I I love Blu-ray. To me, Blu-ray is like it's good enough most of the time, yeah. and um, I don't know. That's just what I buy the most of, and it's like it's a, it, I always feel secure when I at least when I own the movie on Blu-ray of whatever it is, I'm secure with that. I don't feel the need. It's funny with the 4K thing. Are I, I, I assume you're like me, regardless of whether the picture quality is substantially better or not i just kind of buy a 4k when i'm when i get that compulsion to want to do it it's not every movie like american werewolf in london came out on 4k i have a blu-ray that's a 4k it's from a 4k scan or whatever and i was just like you know what that's good enough i like still I, have. Buy, I still buy dvds man if it's a cool edition of a dvd i'll buy it like I sent you the picture of everything I got at FYE the other day and I had three DVDs in there because they were just cool additions that I was like, I'm not going to pass this up. Plus they're cheap and that's more for the collecting purposes. I'm not really going to watch that DVD, but if it's a cool addition that I haven't seen in a while or I don't own, I'm like, yeah, screw it. It's a little, I don't know, a little redheaded stepchild uh, to put on the shelf. You know, it's, I, I enjoy it. Right. But yeah, I agree with you with Blu-ray. Blu-ray is what I buy most of. I don't go out of my way to buy a 4K unless there is something vastly superior about the 4K edition, like the Halloween 4Ks, where they had new features and, you know, obviously the scans and uh, what there was new material. To, and so it was a reason for me to buy them. But if it's just the exact same copy paste release, I'm probably going Blu-ray. I like how Nick, I like how Nick and everybody listening is going. I just love how Nick was saying there was a reason for me to buy those hollow Halloween releases. Always, <laughs> always a reason. Well, my, no, my, well, my point is you are going to buy those motherfuckers regardless. I was. Yes. Um, and we, we, as might, was I, as was I, you might see one of them on, uh, one of my favorites that I own. How about this? I'm going to start this. One of my favorite physical media releases I own. And, it's kind of nostalgia, but not really. I just love this release. It's a DVD. It is my Halloween 25 anniversary Divamax DVD. I love that thing. I love that thing. This one has that cut above the rest where uh, D. Snyder does the... Uh, D. Snyder's doing like the narration and everything, mm -hmm. and I'm a big Twisted Sister guy. I just love this one. Like This is like... This has the best vintage vibes to a release ever. I uh, I put it on top. It's like a I have it on top of the. It's like 
the great wall up there on top of the shelves like this is displayed like this so you can see it i bought it at a fye used for like 15 bucks and this was w well after it was out of print this was like three or four years ago 2018 or so is when i got it which it mean this is from what 20 2003 it says mm -hmm. yep i love to death this release it's got the most it's just the most vintage vibe release ever is that yeah, in your stack? Yeah, it's not in my stack, but I do own it. I do own it. Um, one thing you're going to notice a theme in, in, I only grabbed five because I was trying to be quick, but uh, a lot of, most of them are Halloween releases because I have gone out of my way to buy some really obscure Halloween releases because I'm a Halloween fan. Oh, but, I'm excited about this because you got a lot of, I don't have too many foreign, you got some foreign releases. I, I do. UK, German. Yeah. Um, but the first one, one of my favorite editions of any movie I own is uh, the Mondo Pet Cemetery Steelbook. Uh, I just think that this, this steelbook is, uh, first of all, not only is the artwork just freaking gorgeous on the inside and on the outside, but you know, you got the poster and I just, I don't know what it is, but like, it's so cheesy. Like it's, you've, it's the blue is great. You know that that yes. came out as a record and that's yeah. the same art where I have the mm -hmm. record. I have the record and it's yeah. uh, awesome. And I just, I, I love, you know, I love when steelbooks do this, when you open it and it's all one image from front to back. I, I think that that's really cool. So this is one of my favorite physical media items that I own for sure. Hmm. Pet Cemetery, man. Yep. That's one of the best. Mm -hmm. What's another this? one you got? So this is one of my favorite box sets ever. Uh, my Phantasm Well Go oh, USA yes. box set. So this thing, Nick, goes for a pretty penny. They've re-released it, and they've put it out with a better scan for part two and made it uncut. But still, when I go on eBay, this one is still so expensive because they they did it right and they never replicated this like this again. I mean, funny story about that, Christian. How much is that going for online? Hundreds, hundreds. I, I saw it at Fye the other day when I was there for one thirty nine ninety nine. Uh, that's uh, that's what they had. That's a markup big time because I bought it. You can go watch my vlog of when it came out and when I went to Fye and bought it. Uh, that's that's a markup. So they're still they're marking that sucker up too. Oh yeah, they're they're, they're letting the market dictate that for sure. <laughs> but look at that. I mean, all original art, individual cases one through five. Look at the artwork for three. I love Phantasm Three's artwork. Yeah. Phantasm Two is my is uh where is it at? Phantasm Two is my favorite, and then great. But like they did this box set right. Wellgo killed it. And then they re-released it in like some white box with, with a little plastic sphere. But they upgraded too, which is great. But I just remember saying, this one's still the best looking one that they did. I did they just killed it and it sold out like a son of a bitch, man. And uh, I don't know. It's just one of my favorites. I love, we need to do a Phantasm show soon because I love Phantasm so much. The first three are so freaking good. Four is a lot of reused footage, but it's still kind of cool. Five is bad to me, yeah, but yeah. the first three are great. And part two is one of the best examples of getting a little bit more money, but getting all of it on screen. Such yeah. a fan of Phantasm 2. But this is a man. I'll never get rid of this. I freaking love it. It was one of the best days of my life. Me and Sydney just had a great day when we went to FYE and I found that I was just so happy. But that's one of my favorites. Yeah, one of the my favorite thing that I own in my collection is the Halloween 15 disc set. That's probably the the holy grail in my collection. I also love my, you know, Halloween two and Halloween three snapper cases. Uh, you know, stuff like that. It's just good so times. Simple. Yeah, they're so Nick, simple. But can you them. can you can you imagine? I'm sorry. Can you imagine if all of a sudden Good Times says? Coming out soon, the 4K Ultra HD Halloween 2 and uh, 4K Ultra HD Halloween 3, and they use the same artwork. I'm in. I'm in. I'm buying it, dude. I don't give a shit. I can't wait for to hear. What's up, guys? Nick here at the Lost River Drive, and today we're looking at the Good Times 4K UHD <laughs> Halloween 2. The Does artwork, Good Times still exist? I, I want you to do. I want you to do the classic. The artwork is fantastic. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love, I love getting excited about this shit. This is, oh, dude. 
it's the the next one I want to show, you know, because I wasn't I was naming a few that like I didn't pull, but I love this one. I sought out years ago on Amazon.eu. Uh, it's German. I freaking love this. It is the Rob Zombie's Halloween Two German Blu-ray. Um, oh, wow. And it's got a this is a slip cover. And it's really sleek looking. And then when you open it, it's um, black Blu-ray case. This is like the case art, Michael in the shack with the knife. Oh, man. Uh, and then on the inside here, it came with two postcards, images from the movie. Hold up the uh, pumpkin one. Let me see the pumpkin. Put it, put it close to the camera. Oh, my God. Look at that. Yep. Yep. Postcards that I will never use, but, you know, they're just. You got them. Yeah, they're badass. Um, and then obviously the disc art is the uh, slipcover art of just Michael. But I, I thought that there was because the U.S. seemed like they with their releases of Rob Zombie's Halloween, too. It was just very bland, very basic. Let's just get it out there. Um, but this this was I just love the art on it. And it's got special features that aren't on the American release. There is um, <clears throat> what is it? It says uh, premiere footage. Um, interview with Rob Zombie. I'm trying to read some of it in German. I can't read all of it, but I've had somebody translate it for me before. There's special features on here that aren't on any U.S. edition. It's just fantastic. I, I love that freaking edition. There we go. All right, Nick. I'm going to double head this one right here. My Creep Shows. Oh. I just reviewed Creep Show because I love this movie. And we were actually watching, me and Sydney were watching this today. And my Creep Show 2, which they're both these really nice. This is Arrow and Scream Factory. I love these so much. Uh, these are great. Uh, I don't know what to say about Creep Show 1 and 2. I love both of them, but these are really nice and they're really they good. They go together really well. I don't know, man. This is like the original. They re released Creep Show 2 with these collectors' releases. Uh, Arrow does a really great job and you always put that classic artwork on there. Uh, and the cool thing is like it comes with a comic book all about the making of the movie and stuff. All right, yeah. And end up on the back is a picture of George and Stephen King, but uh, that's that's really 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 cool. So I love that. But my creep yeah. shows are creep shows of the dude. I love creep show so much. And uh, you don't love part three, do you? No, I remember I bought that. Everybody told me it was like it's bad, it's bad, and then I bought it. And I just, I just, I, I don't think it's the worst thing I've ever seen, but I'm not a big fan at all quite frankly yeah. i am a massive fan so the story goes in case you don't know nick because i don't know if you know if you do excuse me or if anybody in the, this is also for the audience so george romero was writing parts for what was going to be a creep show three and that didn't come to fruition for for whatever reason but then they were going to make tales from the dark side the movie which is another anthology film from 1990 and i love tales from the dark side and that is the spiritual creep show three because some of the stories that george wrote i think the black cat where this cat is killer cat but there's a cat segment there that's really cool uh that has the a puppet master guy from it in there um that was used for tales from the dark side the movie so tales from the dark side the movie is really the spiritual people call it the air, air quotes the real creep show three because it kind of was supposed to be so that's my creep show three. I go along with that. Now the other creep yeah. show three, I just I have it. It sits on the shelf, and uh, it's it sits on the shelf. What can I yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. Not a fan. Not <laughs> I, a fan I, either. I haven't met I haven't met many people that are uh, a big fan of a uh, creep show three. So yeah, for good reason. Uh, this I was surprised that this made it into like just one of my favorites that I own. But I'm really really happy about it. And that's the uh, Screen Factory Halloween Five 4K. And I feel like, you know, people talk about the cheesy artwork for all of these releases. It works perfectly for five. I mean, with the scythe and everything, that's just perfect. But the thing I love about this is one, never thought Halloween five was going to get the 4K treatment. I mean, it's Halloween five. Like, I know it's not one of the most popular ones. But on top of that, it's the it's the additional features that you get. You get the Dr. Death opening, which we had heard about for 30 years, but we'd never seen. And although it's not great, I really wanted to see it. Finally got to see it. And you finally get a reel of the uncut gore. We get to see Danielle Harris get stabbed in the leg for the first uh. time. We, we'd heard all the stories about it. We never got to see it. I think they did a great job with that release. I really think they did a great job. So I'm very happy to own that one as well. I will never get over them not using the Dr. Death footage. 
Call Me Crazy, to me, it was a hell of a lot better than A Man with a Parrot. It made more sense for the narrative, especially with where Halloween 6 went. Like that Dr. Death thing just made more sense, but they went with the parrot. I don't know. H- hindsight is twenty twenty, and I don't know if Othanen would have changed his mind on that looking back. I'd love to ask him, but I mean, dude, I love that footage so much. That that weird doctor guy, well, yeah, the doctor death footage, that 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 voodoo guy was so creepy. It just it yeah, it was almost like taking the movie and saying, Hey, it's almost like a let's make this weird movie make a little bit more sense, but still keep that weird factor to it. It's like, yeah. it was so cool to me. It looked like it was done after the fact to make the movie seem cool or not before. I can't get over it. Yeah, you know? no, it's, it's fantastic. It's fan. I, I really enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. I Did wonder you, if that was a Mustafa decision. Like, Hey, you it know. was Mustafa wanted the opening to have a more sympathetic character. So you would Ugh. feel bad for who was died. I didn't give a shit. The old man died. Are you kidding he had a, me? He had a parrot on. I his cared shoulder. about the parrot. I that's all I cared about. Tookie. His name. He's like, come here, Tookie. What, what's what's Stupid the matter, parrot. Tookie? Yeah. Um. But another one that I grabbed that I love is the Walmart exclusive Halloween: The Curse of Michael Myers VHS looking Blu-ray. Um, yes, sir. These are, I've heard so many people say, I got to track this down. I want to find this. I can't find it anywhere. Just the retro look of that alone. It was only five bucks too. And it's the producer's cut. I was like, producer's Damn. cut. Yeah, of course I'm going to buy that. So that that aesthetically is just awesome. And then the last one is the 40th anniversary TCM steelbook. I, I Very love nice. this steelbook with the armadillo on there. Yeah. So the Dillo. Yep. Those are just some of my favorites that I saw and grabbed. All right, Nick, you know what? Mm. Screw it. Why am I the only son of a bitch that prefers the producer's cut? I mean, what the hell is wrong with everybody? It, look, I, I understand your plight and everybody else's plight. When they, it, it, there's a lot of people will pr- will pick the producer's cut because they'll say, "Well, based off of where this movie was going, what the story was supposed to be, that's more true to what it was supposed to be." And they're right. That is, however. I didn't really care for where it was going. So the fact that they did a theatrical, you know, they did reshoots to make it more just like late nineties, kind of over the top, gory, fun, not really lean into the curse of thorn thing. I was okay with because we were going to get into really danger. I mean, Halloween six almost made Halloween go straight to video. If it wasn't for Jamie Lee Curtis, Halloween H2O was going to be straight to video. Um, So it's, you know, there's, I get it. And I, it is the movie in its purest form to date, and I do appreciate it. But some of the ideas just weren't fleshed out well enough. And, and Daniel Farrens, you know, he was he was a fanboy that had never written a motion picture before, and kind of shows. I, I tell you though, I love that shot of Michael becoming the Man in Black at the end, where they're like, "Where's Michael?" And you see this motherfucker walking into the darkness. Who gives a fuck about the storyline how good did that shit look no, i mean that shit was creepy you know it's what amazing. i mean yeah yeah the only thing is that probably would have been the worst way to defeat michael in a halloween movie with the stones uh i honestly think resurrection would have been better than that i just hated that anti like i love the ending I think, of it i think it's a blair witch tie-in maybe <laughs> i mean <laughs> no i'm kidding I, mean, I know i know it's Hey, hey, look, if someone prefers the producer's cut, that's fine. Because really, if someone loves Halloween 6 in general, it's kind of a black sheep. Not a lot of people do. I love it. Christian loves it. I mean, you know, it, it, so whatever it, version you prefer. Is it the stones being Is it the stones being piled up like, like a mountain? Or would, what if they would have made the stones into the Curse of Thorn and that would have stopped Michael? What if it would have looked more aesthetic? I just, I just wish there was no stones. <laughs> it's black <laughs> like, magic. Period. I know, but he gets out of it anyway. That's what I don't understand. Like he's stopped magically by Tommy Doyle, but then we see a scene later. It's actually Doctor Wynn and Michael somehow got out of the stones. Apparently, like but that's one what more, I'm dude. One more movie could have, dude. I just wish they would have done one more. Like in a lot of ways, this reminds me of Halloween Kills. I have so many questions now about this or this or this. What do you mean he goes to the house? What do you mean he wants to look out the window? What do you mean there's radio station? Oh, you'll know. You'll know this October. 
You'll know. And I'm saying I want to know. I want to know where the fuck Michael went. That shot of him looking like a Zeus motherfucker, dude. That shit is pimp. Yeah. Where no, is he I, going? You know. Here's I guess two for me. One the surgery the surgery room massacre in the theatrical cut is one of my favorites in the halloween franchise just him murdering everyone with the strobe light i mean that shit rocks um and i also think the theatrical cuts ending is more dignified for donald pleasance uh because it's it's ambiguous you know i have uh you know yeah i have something i need to like uh, attend to here and whatever he says exactly and he goes inside and you see the mask and then you just hear him scream i i think that's more dignified than the oh it's your curse now dr loomis oh no i have the curse of thorn ah like you're gonna pass that on to loomis this guy's like he's he's dead he's already he's i mean he's about to die like i i just didn't think that ending really worked for donald especially knowing that he died before the movie came out i felt like that would have been like kind of a sour way to end it i don't know i can't get enough of it man i you know i like the theatrical cut too though i do get me a doctor now <laughs> <laughs> and then she just picks up the phone she's like security. security no one does that when you dial security tell me the next time if you have to call 911 do you go 911 like you don't do that you just dial the number <laughs> That's an that's a that's a medical worker who has dealt with the lowest and like just the worst of society because yeah. dude if you're a new hire could you and we got to move on after this but like if you're a new <laughs> hire and somebody comes in and goes I need to see a doctor there's something wrong with my baby so okay okay hold on hold on hold on this motherfucker says what seems to be the problem <laughs> yeah it, he she's so mean and he's like you know that's I, realistic he's, Nick. He's, and she's like, what kind of doctor? Like, so rude. Just She hasn't even looked up at him yet. I'm like, what if this baby's head was split open and you're not even looking? Like, she's you don't seen know it how all, to... Nick. Yeah, but She's you know seen what? it all. That's 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 medical workers for you. Mm -hmm. They get, do they see the worst of society. They see people at their meanest because when shit's hitting the fan, people are cruel and mean. She's yeah. seen it. And she they The world has turned that nurse into a cold bitch. Yeah. And I don't blame her, man. I'm telling you. But then we get a great reunion, you know, Tommy and and, and Loomis. He's like, Dr. Loomis? And he's what like, was, what <laughs> was, wait, Loomis is a psychiatrist. What was he doing at the hospital? Uh, well, originally it was because Jamie was. Uh, Jamie. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Again, 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 I forgot. Yeah. The producer's cut <clears throat> makes more sense. All right. Here's yeah. the last of my physical media. Uh, well, I say the last. Dude, the Scarlet Box set from Hellraiser containing the first three, which for a lot of people is, you know, the buck, the buck stops. At three, some <laughs> kind of four. Three. I can watch four. I can watch the uh, the number of the sequels. Some of them are just, quite frankly, a little boring. If anything, there's one of them. I think it's Hellraiser Debtor, where it's like a it's like a a cop who's investigating murders. Spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen Hellraiser Debtor. Oh no! But it's this cop that basically is investigating all these homicides, and it's him doing it like in his fucking sleep. And Pinhead shows up out of nowhere for like five minutes and basically cuts some kind of like gibberish lines and whatever. And then it, that's it. <laughs> but like these, these like all 4k scans of these movies and this thing opens up like the lament configuration. Like, look, there's a crease in here. Look at this. It just opens oh, yeah. up like this. And each case has this beautiful art on it. And then the uh, booklet, I mean, look at this thing, this, it comes with this book yeah, that's not a booklet. That's a novel. A no it basically <laughs> is. And dude, it, they, it is filled with information. I love the Hell first three Hellraiser films so much. Part two, I think, is one of the greatest sequels ever made. Uh, I, I can't get enough of the Hellraiser. Funny story about the Hellraiser Scarlet box set. So it's expensive now, right? Uh, I don't know how much it's going for. I just know that most people don't buy it because they, even though they want to own it, they don't want to spend the money of what it costs to own it now little dusty up there uh but when this thing was announced i remember it was christmas time and i remember telling my mom my mom was like christian what do you want for christmas and i never asked my mom to spend a bunch of money usually no higher than 50 bucks is what i'll we spend for each other and so i wanted this scarlet box set and it was like 69.95 i messaged my mom i was like mom if you put up 50 i'll i'll cover the rest if you want to do that because i really want this and i want to i need to get it now because it's probably going to sell out quick and she goes, okay. 
Well, the next day or so, she messaged me. She goes, hey, send me the link for that box that you want. That way I can go ahead and just get it ordered while I'm thinking about it. This was early December. I was like, no problem. I pulled up Amazon. It went down to like 43 bucks. I was like, mom, this is insane. It's $43 right now. She goes, okay, let me order it. Boom. And I ordered it. And I remember talking to somebody th that day about the release. And I was like, dude, I got it for 43. It's on Amazon right now. Like what? And they went back. And I was like, dude, no, it's not. It's 60, whatever. It went back up like within a day. So I lucked out big time. So I got this beauty for under 50 bucks when it came out. And hmm. it's till this day, I think one of the nicest. Why the fuck am I not displaying this on top of my shelves? Like I've got to fix that. But anyway, this is in my top five physical media releases of all time. Uh, and again, I have to I have to give the love to Halloween's five and four. Yes. Because the reason these two, I think, get the rub from me on this episode is because you got to see the most noticeable upgrade in picture quality from the rest because three and two and one one got a 4k scan from anchor bay that i think was not as it wasn't as done as well as it could have been i think they used some kind of inner positive or something for that upgrade anchor bay you know how anchor bay is yeah and then two and three constantly got good picture quality releases and they would bump it up a little bit for this and they'd 4k scan the steelbook so they looked the best they did, but you, you couldn't notice it as much. Maybe the nighttime scenes you noticed a little bit better. But f when I first watched these two, I watched Halloween 4 because I, I love Halloween 4. When I watched Halloween 4, I was like, holy mother of God. You know that to me, the only way I can explain it is that almost like that 3D look it has when the 4K is done so good. That's what I felt when I was watching these. And I was like, oh, my God. So. I loved the way these looked. I actually yeah. think five might be the absolute best looking one. It's either four or five. Just some of the scenes in five because there's some really good outdoor shots in five with the girls outside running. That's where you, that natural sunlight on film really gives everything that great shine. But man, they, they look so good. Um, you know, everybody was bitching, whining, pissing, moaning, complaining, texting, tweeting, fucking my spacing about how much they hate the artwork jesus christ man who gives a fuck about the artwork you it's still amazing. bought it you, you know what i mean still bought it yeah i i you know i i agree look i do agree I'm, I'm 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 joking around a little bit i do agree that i missed that scream factory artwork that we got from like the 2012 2015 run those artists justin osborne's my favorite artist of all time that does this stuff he does he's done some of my favorite covers but um I don't know. I, I, I guess I guess I didn't lose my mind when I saw these. I, you know, I mean, what, what the hell's yeah. wrong with me? I was just like, yeah. hey, cool. They're making new Halloweens and they have artwork on them. Uh, it is what it is. I actually think part part four is my favorite one. I think they did. They that that looks like Halloween four. Yeah, I would know? agree that part five is is the most noticeable jump in quality. I mean, you watch part five because if you watch the DVD of part five or the VHS, there are times where you're like, is this a made for TV movie? Like it has a look like that sometimes, but the transfer on this 4K, it does not look like a made for TV movie. This, it, it looks well done. It's remarkable, man. Yeah. And, oh, and then there was, I think we talked about this before. They actually had a feature on here with, was it the cinematographer? Cinematographer. Yeah, Robert, yeah, Rob Draper. Yep. And how nice was it to hear somebody actually talk positively about Gerard? Uh, Ethan it, and Gerard. Dominique always got so much shit and I'll never understand it because people hold some of these directors in such high regard, like Dwight H. Little for part four. What has Dwight H. Little really done? I mean, like people shit on Dominique Gotham and Gerard for his career. It's like, look, both of these guys brought their own flair to these movies and they both look good in their own right. Like Dominique, it was definitely a more foreign feel and a pro aesthetic and approach to this movie. Like, um, even if it's just one of the things that comes to mind is that barn scene with, with Sam and Spitz, like he intentionally doesn't show nudity and stuff because he's a French filmmaker and he wanted it to be like this erotic scene. Like, cause that's how a lot of French films were like that or how he filmed a lot through trees or through the slats in the walls of the barn and stuff like that. And the way he uses light, like I thought he was a, I think he's a really intelligent guy. And, um, you know, he made some lower rate horror sequels like Omen 4 and stuff. So he never really got to get his name out there, unfortunately. But I, I do think he's a he was a very he's a very talented guy. 
I'm looking at Dwight H. Little. He's certainly done some cool movies. Bloodstone is a really cool like adventure movie. I think Arrow put that out. I like Bloodstone a lot. Uh, he did 1989's uh, Phantom of the Opera, which is Robert England. I adore that movie. That movie's really good. Uh, Marked for Death is one of the best Steven Seagal movies. And I think Pizzow actually interviewed him talking about working with Seagal. That was when Seagal had his short-lived but still very successful theater run. Uh, he did Free Willy 2. That's cool, I guess. <laughs> uh but actually dwight hasn't directed a whole whole lot it looks like he's that, done that's what i meant he never he didn't really have movies. much of a career yeah you know well like, he did a lot of tv he did a lot of tv yeah he did he, yeah that's the majority of what he's been doing the last 20 years is television i would venture to say that i this is my take on it halloween 4 is a better script i think halloween 5 is better uh, photographed, I guess I would say. I think that the directing in Halloween Five is stronger, in my opinion, than Halloween Four, but the script isn't as strong. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I just think Halloween Four, everything was the same manufacturer being put into like the same vehicle. Everything feels right when you've got this other guy. Oath, I like Othman too, but he is coming at this movie. Metric, uh, he is coming at this movie metrics, metric system, and everybody else is coming at the movie with the what do you call it? What's the, what's what do Americans used? It's like everybody else uses degree Celsius and meters, mm -hmm. and every the director's coming at the movie with meters and yards and Celsius, but everybody around him is coming at it with foot inches fahrenheit like that it's yeah. like everybody's coming at it that if he would have had a bunch of people that had the same mindset as him and a, and had that same culture as him it probably would yeah get, you know what i'm saying a lot of cooks but, in the kitchen there but i i do like the visual stuff from five i really like the uh shots inside the myers house and it is like an Italian looking film, even though he's, I mean, he's, I don't think he's Italian, but like the look of he's, it. Yeah. He loves yeah, he, that really visual, visual style, but yeah, I love, I love four. I love me some four. Um, okay. So that does about, does that's about, that about does it Jesus Christ for some of our favorites. There's more. Uh, and it pretty much changes every time I do it. My ginger dead man, actually my, my evil bong box set is pretty, pretty wicked. Uh, I love that thing, but Let's talk about our wish list, whether it be a Blu-ray, a 4K, uh, a better version of a Blu-ray or a 4K, box sets. Uh, where do you want to start? I have a bunch of box sets. Like, that's what I have. I only have three box sets. I've got like um, 12. <laughs> oh, man. What do you want to start with? 4Ks and Blu-rays and then box sets? Let's Yeah, let's go with 4K. I can tell you some that I want, like... Obvious, the obvious is like a 4K of ROTLD. I think that movie would look fantastic on 4K. You know, I would love uh, the Prom Night sequels, uh, Mary Lou. Everybody wants a Blu ray of Prom Night 2. Hello, Mary Lou. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, the Hel some of the Hellraisers would be great to have actual 4Ks of. Um, it's weird. Like, there's no rhyme or reason with some of these 4Ks because you got like Vinegar Syndrome putting movies out on 4K. That, like, if you were going to make a list of everything that should have a 4K in an order of imp importance, some of the movies at like the most bottom of the barrel that no one would ever has ever heard of are getting 4K releases from Vinegar Syndrome. I know. I know. And, you know, yeah. and then like Madman is like this really low budget fun slasher but it's getting a 4k I and then you've got it. movies you, you've got you know for for god's sakes the elm street films haven't even gotten really good blu-ray releases yet it's like where is the where is the balance of scales here with all this stuff <laughs> there is none i mean my my ideas were more of like they don't even have a blu-ray release in the states Perfect. or maybe they or maybe they did and then they just had one run and now you can't find them. Let's uh, do it. P2. I gotta have, I gotta have uh, a Blu-ray of that. Um, Black Christmas, 2006 scream factory should be jumping on that. I don't know why they haven't. Well, um, I, I tell you, I don't know if they have, I think black Christmas. Oh, six got an HD DVD. 
Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> we, almost bought, a, we almost bought. We almost had a Blu-ray release uh, yeah. years back, and now it's out of print. Yeah, sounds about right. They probably both came out at the same time, dude. We almost bought an HD DVD player. My dad was like, "We went out to buy one," and then there was a conversation with the guy at Best Buy about, you know, he told us you need to wait a little while because I don't know who's going to win this war, and you don't want to be hosed out buying one of these players and seeing which one dies. And I'll tell you why HD DVD HD DVD lost because PlayStation Three played Blu-rays. Yep. PlayStation th- PlayStation 2 made DVD a household thing. Right? I mean they yep. they did. So yeah, well, they, they, I had one. That's what we used to watch our DVDs. Yeah. Um uh Silent Nights 3 through 5 would love a Blu-ray of any of those, you know, 4K whatever it may be. I think one that a lot of people talk about that needs a Blu-ray, Fright Night Part 2. Um yeah, I've there, I've yeah. got this I've got the Spanish Blu-ray and it looks okay, but there's room for improvement and no special features. And then that 07 um home invasion thriller Christmas movie inside. Love that movie. Never right. got a Blu-ray release here. And then that movie, I haven't seen this movie, Christian, but a lot of people like this movie. I know you've seen it. I, I'm gonna butcher this first name. The Poughkeepsie tapes, or however you say it. The Poughkeepsie tapes has a Blu-ray. Screen Factory it, it, put that out. Okay, okay. And okay. let me tell you something, Nick. You need to go on. I think it's on Amazon Prime. It is the most fucked up found footage movie, disturbing footage, found footage movie I've ever seen. It, yeah, it, it kept it kept me up at night. It's really disturbing. It's mm-hmm. so well done. You've got to see it. It's it's if you have Amazon Prime, it's on there. I do. So you can watch that. Don't that's certainly not a kid movie though. You <laughs> no. don't want that kid anywhere around that thing. He he's not around when I watch horror movies. Yeah. Um but those are just a few like movies off the top of my head that I was like, they need a new release, like because like I said, Black Christmas is one that had a Blu-ray release years ago, went out of print, and nobody thought to do an updated release. I mean, I the Scream Factory just the the aesthetic of that poster and just it being a Christmas horror movie, the Scream Factory could knock a freaking Black Christmas edition out of the fucking park. And I just want to see it so bad. Um, and I, I have think, a couple box sets, but I'll wait until you give your 4K and Blu-rays. Uh, yeah, I think I think that they probably are going to get working on that era of movies more now that now that we're getting farther and farther away from it. They're feeling much more vintage and and that kind of thing. Uh, There's there's certain things about those titles that I think that a lot of people would be willing to revisit and go back to now enough time has passed. So and Black Christmas 06 has found a newfound love for an appreciation from a lot of people after that abomination that was 2019. I mean, yeah. (laughs) It's like being in a bad relationship, leaving it and going like to a much worse one. And then you say, I'm going to go back to that one. Wasn't yeah, so bad. It wasn't <laughs> so bad. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I like black, black Christmas. Oh six. I like that movie. It's fun. I think that they're, they're, they're probably at least trying. I, I'm sure that, you know, only, uh, when we get to this year's Christmas, we'll see, maybe there'll be an, a sign of it. A few, a few more that I would like to see trick or treat the 1986 gonna, yeah. rock and roll movie. That one too. Yep. Oh, actually, I'm really excited. Somebody sent me a message today. Hard Rock Zombies is getting a 4K <laughs> from Vinegar Syndrome. <laughs> so I'm going to get that. Oh. Um, uh, what else? I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. Oh, I would actually love to see Charlie Band do a Puppet Master 4K. He, uh, did oh, a, yeah. He, he, did a full, he did a full 1080p for the Puppet Master films, and they all look good. I think Puppet Master 1 deserves a good 4K release. Um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff that I would like to see hit. Oh, one of my all time. I was actually tweeted. I tweeted about this today. I really want Day of the Dead on 4K. That's my favorite. One of my favorite George Romero movies. I would love that on 4K. I would have said Candyman until yesterday when Scream Factory announced it. And I, I'm so excited for that. I can't. I'm going to buy that sucker. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably grab that one, too. That's that's. Gut instinct. That's a title I'd I'd, I'd be willing to uh, upgrade for. Uh, I'll tell you a 4K we need. Poltergeist. Oh, okay, okay. I would love yeah. a polter because I I've got a new love for Poltergeist one. Um, I think that that movie's actually 
The thing about Poltergeist that I keep forgetting is I think the movie gets better and better and better as it keeps going. So the beginning of the movie is what kind of not necessarily loses me, but I'm just like, okay, this is pretty good, but it keeps getting better and it keeps getting better and it keeps getting, that's the thing I like about Poltergeist one now. So once I stuck with it and I was like, you know, I'm like, damn, this movie really is fucking great. It is. Uh, I would love a Poltergeist one 4k. Um, you know, I would Rob, like Rob zombies Halloween too. Would love specifically yeah i mean specifically too i mean that 16 mil and and devil's rejects would look so good yep. was house of a thousand shot on 16 mil uh or was it, it 35 mil oh my god it's, i don't want to be wrong i i it's don't a weird think time so. I, I well no no it was 99 2000 he was shot it so it's like it's hard to say what they were using at that time it was it, it was 16 mil it was 16 mil, if I remember correctly, because I was listening to a podcast the other day, a movie review podcast, and I was listening to their review of um, House of a Thousand Corpses, and they were talking about how he shot it in 16 mil. So I think it's also 16 mil. Those all three would probably look really good. But, like, dude, Halloween 2 would look so... Rob Zombie's H2 would look so good in 4K, especially the uh, hospital sequence. Oh yeah, dude. When you see that shot of the nurse when she falls down after like kind of coming back into the nurse's station, mm -hmm. and you see the shot from Michael standing sideways and looking over, just that you, when you get to see all that film grain in that scene, it's so nice. I would just die. Yeah, I die. also I would say all the fucked up dream sequences in that movie would look great in 4K. I think that those would just pop even more than they already do. You know, Lori in the fucking casket, that like dinner table full of creatures. Like, oh, that would be so. Yes. Oh, uh, how about Child's Play? Oh, in 4K. E easily. I'm still waiting on Scream Factory to do a Child's Play 2 and 3 uh, releases. Everybody is, man. I yeah. mean, there's no telling. I mean, it, it, it'd be a weird thing because like nobody want. I can, I would take I would take four on four K as well, but nobody's chomping at the bit for a seat of Chucky on four K or anything not, like that. You're not. So it's a I'm weird not. those. That's a weird situation. Like you know, if, if if it could be an all or nothing thing. Um, I'm trying to think of what else would be would... really cool on four K or what hasn't made the jump. Quite frankly, I can't really think of anything that hasn't made. You the know, jump Christian. Yet. I would probably watch Seed of Chucky again if it got a 4K release. Oh, just so that, to see that's what it'll, what it'll take? Like. Yeah, yeah, honestly. I don't think I ever have desire to watch that movie again. I, I just, I don't. Pet Cemetery got a really good 4K release. They killed mm -hmm. the picture upgrade on that. That looks so good. Yeah, I got a double feature of the original and the remake on 4K. Um, they both look really good. I take The Craft on 4K. That's my favorite Nev Campbell movie. I love The Craft. She's great in that. Um, I don't know, man. Um, oh, I got a bone to pick with you. Oh, shit. I'm going to disagree with you on something. So I was watching your Horror Hall video from the other day. Exorcist 3 is, in fact, the scariest and best Exorcist movie. <laughs> Justin said the same thing. Look, I, I'm probably blinded by nostalgia. Uh, I can, because The Exorcist was the first horror movie I ever saw. So that shit just affected me deeply. Um, I don't think either one of them scare me now. They, but The Exorcist 3 is fantastic. I, I did mention in the video, it's the only yeah. Exorcist sequel that deserves to exist. Um, when I say scariest, what I'm really saying, because like... Yeah, what's really scary anymore? You're right. What I'm saying is I think Exorcist 3 is, in fact, the absolute best Exorcist movie. It's the darkest. It's the most emotionally... Uh, it just fucks with your head. Like, it really so does. Bad. And my wife was watching it with me, and about 40 minutes in, she got up, and she's like, I'm just going to go in the bedroom. I'm like, you don't like it? She's like, it's boring. I was like, oh, my God. You didn't even get to Brad Dourif yet. Oh, man. Um, I want to yeah. talk about that. <clears throat> but it, yeah, yeah, you know, it might be an action. It might be a better movie. I think the thing was that, you know, William Peter Blatty felt the thing that pisses me off about it is that movie never needed to be an exorcist movie. And he, it wasn't supposed to be. It I know. Was, Legion. Yeah. And he was pressured to make it tie into the exorcist. Uh, yeah. So that's what you get pretty much with the end. But 
Um, it's it's a great movie on its own, and it's probably my favorite Brad Dourif performance. I mean, I mean that, dude. He is I so good. I love The Exorcist. I f- actually some of my favorite moments of The Exorcist is when they were over in the Middle East doing all the excavating and finding the uh, what's the little demon thing called uh, in the beginning of The Exorcist. I know exactly what you're talking about. Is it like a talisman? No, no the p- something Pazuzu. 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 Yeah, Pazuzu. Yeah. Like, I love all that stuff in the movie. Um, oh, okay, I love yeah. The Exorcist. I love everything about The Exorcist. But I think about what would fuck with me the most in either of those movies. And without a doubt, it would be that door opening to that solitary confinement room, sitting across the room in the seat from Brad Dourif. And hearing him just use that menacing voice, you are doing a clear invitation to the dance right now. Dude, mm-hmm. Brad Dourif is f- the best. And that shot of the white nurse with that monstrous <laughs> blade. Yeah, yeah. That killed me the first time I saw it. I mean, I was not ready for that because that movie was so anti-jump scare the entire time that when it actually did it, that's the beauty of the jump scare in The Exorcist 3 is because the movie is the movie visually stylistically says we are way too good for jump scares. We are way better than that. This is a movie that is so psychologically damaging. Ooh, and then it comes. And dude, it's the one of the greatest jump scare moments in cinema history. Yeah, no, it's. Give me, I don't know. At this sleep point, on it, maybe, sleep on it. At for this me. point, it probably is just nostalgia. It really probably is just nostalgia because I had a blast with The Exorcist Three, and I, I mean, I hadn't seen it in freaking years, man. And best. I was just reminded of how much I liked it. And I, like I said in the video, I blocked out every Exorcist sequel because I watched The Heretic and it sucked. And I was, a te- <laughs> <laughs> I watched The Heretic when I was a teenager and it sucked so bad. And I also it remember, sucks. <laughs> I also remembered hating the prequel. Um, the beginning, Damn. I was like, "This is so boring. It's so dumb." They need it- to, they need to re-edit those pretty badly. I, I watched those two. I'm not a massive fan of of any of them, quite frankly. Two, I can watch two. There's like there's some but, some nuggets of some cool stuff in two, I think. And Linda's- let me let me just say to you though, Christian, isn't that all the more reason why we should at least have some a mild bit of excitement for the new David Gordon Green Exorcist movie that got announced last year because. There's only one good follow-up to The Exorcist. I mean, how bad can it really be in comparison? Like, I, I'm i going to go really controversial on this. I want a black comedy for The Exorcist. Well, it's David Gordon Green. Because you're not going to get, you're not going to be scared by this shit. It's not going to happen. I want black comedy. That's what I kind of want. I think it could be done. Uh but then it's like I say that I feel like I'm compromising because I'm saying there's no way they're going to make like this really good movie. <laughs> I just don't. You know Probably what, dude? Not. Probably they need to, not. They need to requel it or remake it, quite frankly, because what's the point of doing a sequel? No, but that's then, what it, it's. It's a requel. It's a requel. You're getting the, the woman, the fuck uh, Reagan's mom, the actress. She's coming back. She's coming back. Yeah, yeah, she's coming back. And Linda Blair has not been asked back. But there is a feeling that because Linda Blair talked about it. She said, I haven't been asked back yet. I would love to do it, though. There's a feeling that both of them are going to come back. You know what, dude? I have completely let go of caring about this requel sequel remake shit you know oh, I, five cream rocked well you, well, you know it, it is a little bit of a bummer i i uh i went and saw studio 666 earlier today the new foo fighters movie yeah. and it was really fun but the i read the news that really was just very upsetting uh both this movie and this new movie movie called the cursed which is supposed to be this werewolf film which i never got to see it they tanked, they tanked. yeah and it, it does uh, it, it's really sad because it's just like what movies are making money the properties that everybody knows and it's not because they're necessarily better movies than these other properties but it's because they have a built-in awareness john carpenter has spelled this out why do the studios like remakes because it's cheaper to market it's cheaper to market Name recognition, push. baby. I mean, that's that's half the battle right there. Yeah. One Facebook yeah. ad, you know, it, can probably stir up more emotion and readiness than ten million dollars for the cursed or or Studio Six Six Six. It's also 
that during COVID, what got people out into the theaters? They wanted to see sequels or, you know, prop to properties they knew. They knew. It, people weren't going to take, oh, I'm not going to go to the theater to watch a movie I know nothing about. It could suck. Spider-Man No Way Home killed it, yeah, didn't it? Abs almost $2 billion. It's the fourth highest grossing movie of all time as of right now. And that was a mixed thanks- surge. And that's all thanks to one man. Toby Maguire, <laughs> Andrew Garfield as well. But I like I hey I'm actually I'm rewatching all the Spider Man film to get to get ready for No Way Home because I was like well I do want it to make sense to me so I can't decide if I like Spider Man three or not. Spider Man three is fun for what it is. Is it? Let, let me give you my objectively good. No, but it's it's fun. Punch me, I bleed. What the fuck do you mean by that? That had no relevance to the conversation. Like you yeah. were arguing about your relationship, and this is what he says. Yeah, I, I think he's trying to say like because that's that moment where he's basically like, yeah, I'm Spider Man, but I'm a human. Like I, I'm a, I can be hurt too. Like because uh, it's the whole Mary Jane thing. I get it. Um, Look, Toby's movies as a whole are better than Andrew's movies. Um, but I the, loved the first Andrew Garfield movie. Oh, and it's I, I think it's fantastic. I, I think that that was the most comic accurate Spider-Man that we had gotten was the first Amazing Spider-Man movie. And a lot of people agreed with that. Um, he's also the best actor out of all the three. I mean, this is an Oscar winner. Um, you know, he has a long track record of act. He's just a great actor. He, I mean, he, he was really good. I, yeah. I, I, I he was really good. This is my take on Spider-Man 3. I uh, Before I had read that Sam Raimi was not happy, and that's where he basically said after Spider-Man 3, there was talks about doing a 4, but he basically said, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna back out. You guys take it and, and move on without me, and that's cool. My take is, based on what I saw on camera, was there had to have been a large number of scenes and footage cut out because it's basically three storylines that you barely see much of at all fit into this there had to have been so much footage cut out of it's actually not cut it's it's not footage that's cut it's footage that they couldn't get because of the time frame what happened was it, the the script is done. They've started filming and Sony is like, you've got to put venom in this movie. Sam Raimi was very adamant. No venom will be in the next movie. I am not introducing venom in three. And Sony said, yes, you are. So they had to do a rewrite. And then they were like, well, we got to see Harry turn into the goblin. So they had to do another rewrite. So Sam Raimi is filming additional rewrites while they're filming the movie and just trying to fit it into the narrative. And it feels really weighed down because it should have just been a movie about, the Sandman. I then, loved the Sandman character. Yeah. And then maybe at the end, you can still have Harry come in. They, maybe he and Peter don't even need that fight. Harry can just come in and help him fight the Sandman and still die. You never needed Venom. Although I feel like Venom gets a bad rap in that movie. I think the effects look fine. and I don't mind Topher Grace at all. I actually like him as an actor. But to shoehorn him in like that was just like, no. <laughs> Who goes into church and says, Jesus, <laughs> I need you, you to kill Peter <laughs> But I'm telling you, that scene is fucked because it does tell you just how like how down bad he is in that moment. Like in that moment, he is like, I have nothing going for me. Kill this dude. Like it's, it's it, there's something very humorous about it. But I will say this. If you're re- rewatching all the movies, the Marvel movies are the least enjoyable. They're they're too kid friendly. Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home. I, I think they're too kid friendly. I think that there's way too many connective tissues to all the Marvel movies. And I haven't seen 90% of them. Uh, so I was worried about no way home. Uh, at least the stuff without Toby and Andrew. And, uh, but I went and saw it anyway, cause I just wanted to see Toby and Andrew back. And luckily they're in like half of the movie. So it's worth it. Uh, but actually the stuff with Tom Holland's Peter, it's, it's amazing. He truly becomes like Spider-Man and it's not this, marvel shared universe movie anymore it actually feels like his movie he does a great job I, it's just it's a great movie man i mean it really was a great movie not just because of nostalgia uh and i think when you watch it you'll walk away and go man yeah that andrew garfield guy he steals the show everybody said it he gets some of the best moments he's he steals the show but yes you do need to rewatch his movies before you watch it because there's an important character arc from andrew specifically so 
Yeah, just, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy that one on Blu-ray or 4K, one of the two, whenever it comes out. I'm not gonna buy the previous ones, but I'm gonna get that one. So I'm excited. Anyway. Yes. So, All right, so box, I got Spider-Man box, set. box sets. Christian, you want to just start with the one that we've been talking about for what fucking five decades, however long it's been? Yeah, let's talk about the Howling box set. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Obviously, I want a Freddy Krueger box set. I've I've detailed my thoughts on a realistic version of that box set. But when people ask me what it should look like, that's the question I get the most. I think take your Friday the 13th Scream Factory box set and do a version just like that. Same artist doing that collage style, but make it a red color box. And it'd be like the companion to it. That's what I want more than anything. And obviously, I want part five's kill scenes. <sighs> put in hd inserts if possible um i think a lot of people need to see dream child uncut it's so gross um you know do the real 3d i guess for freddy's dead uh for that one fucking scene um new nightmare deserves a really good upgraded scan really good all uh, quite frankly i would i would want i want i want good good scans for all of them all of them i really do um, I wouldn't mind a new interview with a uh, remake, Freddy. Um, I'd yeah. like to hear his thoughts. I forget his name. Jackie, um, Jackie I'd like here. to. I'd like to hear Jackie recollect a little bit. You know, I'd like to hear him discuss his. Just talk about it. I, I can't recall ever hearing him talk about it. Besides press stuff, I feel bad for the guy, man. I really do. He he did a good job in that role, and he got shit on just because he wasn't Robert England, and because the material wasn't great. Uh, I'm yeah. sure he sleeps good at night. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he does, but I do feel bad for him because that that's an iconic character to play. It really is. And you don't want people to shit on you for that. I mean, yeah. You know, one of my favorite scenes of him is when you get to see him actually running away from the townspeople. Yeah. It's it, it that's he, I think that whole scene is acted like beautifully. And when he's in there and he's like, I didn't do anything. And you like almost believe this dude. You're like, Again, they, they fucking changed their minds, man. Yeah, because they yeah. he was gonna be innocent. Fuck, they should have kept him innocent. I'm pissed off about it. Mm -hmm. Fucking yeah. bastards. Yep. Sons of bitches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely have a Nightmare on Elm Street box on my list too. I have an Evil Dead box set too because listen, I love the Groovy Collection, but it didn't include Army of Darkness or 2013, and I think you would have a great excuse to put out a new one this year. Because Evil Dead Rise comes out. And I think once that comes out, you could get a box set with all five movies. And I would love to see that. I think that that movie is going to be pretty good. I just think it, it's going to be pretty good. It's had, I mean? th it's had three test screenings so far. The last one was last Friday. Uh, one of the scoopers I follow was talking about it. All the reactions have been positive. Uh, all the reactions have been positive. So I haven't heard one bad thing out of a test screen. Everyone says, yeah, this is an Evil Dead movie. If you're worried it's not going to work without Bruce Campbell, even after seeing 2013, which they proved you didn't need him, uh, everyone says, nah, it works. This movie's awesome. So, uh, Yeah, and the, I would love a box set, too. I mean, I got the Groovy collection because it is it is So exactly did I, that. yeah. It's exactly that. It's groovy. Yeah, it's groovy. Um, and I do love... I never had the first two movies on 4K at all, and I didn't own the show completely. So it's a great set. Obviously, the different studios, Universal owns part three and all that. But I mean, if Halloween can make it happen, I was going to say Scream Factory made it work with Halloween. I just like it, it never say never. Friday the 13th was able to do that with Paramount and Warner Brothers. They put the co collection out uh, twice now, the, the tin box set and the Scream Factory. So it's like never say never. My number second biggest want of all time would be like a genuine and this one is all over the place but like a genuine texas chainsaw massacre box set mm -hmm. that would be cool it would have to I, I mean you'd have to upgrade some of those movies for sure i mean part one is getting 4k releases right now i think this year part one is gonna be getting 4k releases from a number of companies which is exciting um, i'm sure dark sky will announce down the road maybe this summer that they're gonna do it for america uh, part two has a 2K scan from the inner positive from Scream Factory. Part three looks okay from Warner Brothers. Part four, they did a good job. Scream Factory did a really good job with that one. Um, I mean, even the remake and the the beginning could probably use some better scans too. I don't remember those looking bad. I mean, they look good, but I mean, there's always room for improvement. Yeah, I think. they haven't been updated in a while. I, I but just think about a really 
kick ass Texas Chainsaw Massacre box set. Oh, oh yeah. Great one. Sign me up. And again, another excuse to do it because this movie was watched a lot on Netflix. I'm sure it will get a physical media release. What better time? I hope it does, man. Like I'm still really nervous about it not getting Netflix released. normally does with their bigger properties. Stranger Things is the first thing that comes to mind. You you can get those physical seasons because Fuller House it's, it's did so, too. Yeah, it's so popular. So I, I think Cobra Kai mm-hmm. got physical. I just hope I can't movie wise. It's hard to think about how many movies that they've done though that have come out on physical. Like the TV shows, yeah. sure, but movies, it's I can't really think of anything. I think the one thing that we have to our advantage is that the horror community is probably the most outspoken about physical media. And since it's a horror movie that was watched by a lot of horror fans, they're going to feel the pressure of putting it out on physical media, I think. Let's hope so, man. Yeah. Let's freaking hope so. The only other box that I had written down that I could think of at the time was Scream. Uh, I thought that getting a Scream box set with the fifth movie uh, I think would be great. Maybe you wait until after six comes out and you just do all six movies. I mean, who knows? But I I would love to see a box set of that sooner or later. That's what I had written down as well. I had a Scream box set. Um, But then again, if they're making two more, which I think is their initial plan, right? They've only been given the green light for six. And I don't know if that's because they don't want to have a weird trilogy be five, six, and seven because trilogies don't normally go that way. Or if Paramount is saying, okay, we'll give you another one, but we're not going to green light two right now because what if the the next one just is nowhere near as popular as this one? And then we've already invested because Paramount is like that sometimes. You know, like you said, they love their franchising, but at the same time, that company hasn't been in the best of areas over the last decade or so to just throw money out. Um, so we'll see. I think that it was always mapped out as three movies though. And, uh, so I would assume there will be two more. Well, let's see. I've got a number of them. I have a really cool idea, but I'll save that for last. Uh, I would like a, just a super fan version of the saw collection. Yeah. Something really nice and just gaudy looking, you know, like a nice fat box set with all the movies up to a spiral, nice individual cases, all posters, um, do some kind of weird, like the box set could just be like simple, like kind of like this dirty black and brown color palette with the, with the red swirls from Billy's cheeks, the mm-hmm. saw logo on top, you know, just something nice, just something cool, make it a nice big fat box set that could take up 20% of a shelf. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd buy it. Um, how about the Howling box? <laughs> no, I do want the Howling box. Set. Yeah. I, want the, I want the box set to be fur. Oh yeah, I would like a, a Adam Green's Hatchet box set. Uh, I'd buy I that. Could, I'd buy that. I, I'm trying to think of who owns. It. I think that's Dark Sky as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but that's all from under the same umbrella. Why haven't they put out a nice collection? Shit, give me a. Give me a nice chunky case, uh, you know, uh, multi pack for God's sakes. Give me something cool. I don't know. Yeah. They they came out individually. How about this? The Blair Witch trilogy box set. Yes, because too many people forget about 2016, which is a good movie. It is a good movie. I like 2016. I like Book of Shadows way more, but I like 2016. I, I would venture to say that there is not a bad Blair Witch movie. Like a truly bad Blair Witch. No, movie. I, I I love the original. I think it's one of the best found footage movies ever. Uh, I love Book of Shadows so much. It's so cool and meta and just just smart. It's smartly written. Really good movie. And then I thought that Blair Witch twenty sixteen was was pretty good. You know. Yeah, I I think that that'd be something that I feel like would be easy to put out too. So I don't know why they haven't. Well, what's interesting is I have this Spanish release of Blair Witch 1 and 2 on Blu-ray, and it's a really cool, like, videotape thing that you open up. And it's a cool little release, but it's not American, and um, it's Region A, I think. But it's, uh, you know, I think you could do something cool there. Again, just put a nice, big, fat Blair Witch cross on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, I think I've shown you, but... Oh, the tattoo, yeah. I'm a Blair Witch Mark, you know. Yeah. 
I love the Blair Witch. So Blair Witch would be cool. Um, I don't give a shit, dude. Give me the Hellraiser Ultimate Collection up until the one where it's the great value guy playing Hellraiser. <laughs> yeah. Some weird looking dude. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. Dude, then all those all those sequels become underrated, you know, when <laughs> everybody oh. buys the box set. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about this movie that's underrated. Let me tell you about Hellraiser Debtor. Yes. This is the most underrated, overhated, <laughs> underappreciated <laughs> Hellraiser movie what? in the franchise. Oh my god. I don't understand the hate this movie gets. <laughs> we have got to construct a review where we say all those terms. Oh, I don't will. understand the hate. I never understood the hate this movie gets. This is the most underappreciated Hellraiser sequel. Halloween Kills. Underappreciated. <laughs> is that even a word? I guess. Uh, in our community, I guess it, it is. is. It yeah. is. Uh, okay. Um, so here's my last box set idea. What company has put out the majority of John Carpenter's films on Blu-ray? Oh, fucking shit. I mean, it's an easy answer. I just... Is it Scream Factory? It's Scream... Yeah. Scream Factory has put out... Scream the Factory thing. has put out, in order, I could probably tell you, Assault, Halloween. Uh, They have put out Escape from New York. They have put out The Thing. They have put out Starman. They have put out Prince of Darkness. They have put out They Live. They have put out Memoirs of Invisible Man. They have put out Body Bags. They have put out Village of the Damned. They have put out In the Mouth of Madness. They have put out, I think, they have put out Elvis. They have put out basically his entire catalog. Christian John, Hannah Horror wants the, a John Carpenter collection. The John Carpenter Scream Factory box set. And make the artwork, that really cool picture of John doing this. I know you've, I know you've seen this picture. Mm -hmm. Where yep. John's opening his eye like that. Can you imagine... The Scream Factory John Carpenter Collection. Imagine the artwork you could put on this box set. Dude, when I had this idea come to my head, I said, dude, this would be the coolest box set ever created. The John Carpenter Collection. Are you kidding me? No, I, I mean, think that, yeah, that would be fantastic. That would be fantastic. Especially because John Carpenter doesn't like ever do sequels. So it'd be a bunch of unrelated titles, which is amazing. Because like, if you think about it, like, well, what about a Wes Craven? Well, he's got New Nightmare and Nightmare One. That's kind of weird. And then you would have like four Scream movies. And it, so that'd be weird. But John Carpenter, no, no, it'd be a bunch of different movies that are totally unrelated. And also... I'm sure John it would be would. so cohesive. I mean, you could do yes. something with yes. West. You could do, but then again, Arrow has the Hills Have Eyes. Arrow has yes. Last House on the Left. Scream Factory's got Shocker. Uh, they've got uh, People Under the Stairs, which is so fucking good. I love people. I love that uh, movie. They've got it. But dude, yeah. When I had this come to my mind, I was like, sure, we all own a bunch of these movies already, but who gives a fuck? <laughs> could you yeah. imagine the John Carpenter box set? Dude, the artwork would be so insane. You could do, I've, I, in my mind, it's amazing. Get a nice picture of John doing the eye. I love that shot of John. Yeah. Or get that picture of him in like that late 70s outfit from like during the cinema fantastic era when he was doing those interviews like that, mm -hmm. you know, and just dude, cover. You could put the They Live Zombie on this corner. You could put Michael above John's head, like about to stab him. Unfortunately, Christian, that probably won't happen until he's dead. That'll probably be something like to remember him by. Like I, I could see that, but not probably not until he's dead. Unfortunately, yeah. And I wonder if Scream Factory has a little bit of a little bit of self like awareness of how. Even though I would buy it so fast, I wonder like as a company they would say, "Okay, look, we've put all these movies out on Blu-ray. We've put the majority of these movies out on Steelbook." Now we're putting, they just announced Escape from New York. Yep. Now we're putting these movies out on 4K. At what point can we, do we stop putting out his movies for people to buy? I mean, I would still buy. <laughs> John the, will uh, never tell him to stop. He the loves not. the paycheck. <laughs> but in my mind, dude, the John Carpenter collection, I mean, I'd have to have it just as a, a token of respect to the guy who has penned. 
I mean, dude, when I think about some of my he's favorite my, movies, he's my favorite horror director. You yeah. know, like, yeah, he, he's probably my second. George Romero is my favorite, but John. I mean, dude, the thing I love about John, I I always tried to figure out in my mind why do I love John Carpenter movies? What is it about John that makes his movies so good? And I think I figured it out. John is never self indulgent when he makes films. He never harps on something that he's obsessed with in the film or puts too much of something. He is so practical when make with just making a movie, not making this, not making. He's so grounded and practical. Here's the idea for the movie. Let's make this good, interesting and move at a decent, fast pace and just make it good. He's never self-indulgent and just gets fixated on. I love the color pink, so let me fucking shove pink through every scene of this. Or I love uh, denim shirts or denim jeans. So like everybody has to wear denim jeans, and he never gets fixated on weird things that convolute his movies. He is no. so grounded and practical. I think that's what it is that makes John so good. John also has this penchant for, and it's a true skill to he can make you feel. He can make a scene, make a character, make the audience feel so isolated, so alone, so helpless. I mean, think about just the setting of the thing. Think about what Lori goes through on Halloween. Think about, I mean, this, even his newest movie, you know, from the late 2000s, The Ward, how, how isolated that movie f feels. It's just a common theme throughout his movies of, of, he can build atmosphere. He can build tension. He can make you feel isolated. It's, it's just, he's a fucking master. The fact that this man hasn't directed anything in over a decade is a travesty because I know how good he is. And if he has a brilliant idea left up his sleeve, I want another John Carpenter movie before he dies because he is a brilliant director. I mean, he, yeah, I just, he, he when you, you watch interviews with him sometimes and these guys try to get him to express his thoughts in this intellectual, artistic way. What inspired you? He hates that word. Yeah. He hates that word, inspire. What inspired you to take this film or create the sounds? I, got, I grabbed the keyboard and I went bong and I started from there and I created a piece of music. He doesn't ever get caught up in his shit. I think that's why he just stayed... John being John Carpenter. He even when he went to the big studios. Yeah. Even when he went to Universal, granted most I think I think every studio movie he ever did tanked. The thing tanked. Uh Starman did okay. Uh The Thing tanked Starman and then he went back to uh more so independent and those did good. Prince of Darkness was pretty good. They Live was pretty profitable. Uh and then he goes back to Universal. Memoirs of an Invisible Man tanked. In, in the Mouth of Madness, tanked. Village of the Dam did not was not a runaway hit. Or was it Village Village of the Dam? Not Children of the Dam. Mm -hmm. Village of the Dam. Yeah. All of his studio stuff tanked. All becomes cult hits, especially in the Mouth of Madness. All of them become phenomenal cult hits. And the thing, what am I saying? The thing. But it's like he is a movie fans film, like movie a movie fans filmmaker. He just does not get caught up in anything stupid. He's the man. He is the man that has never been affected by Hollywood whatsoever. He was born with a talent. This wasn't something you could teach for John. That's why he doesn't like those. Oh, you know, tell me about the inspiration behind this. Walk me through it. John's like, I the fuck it. are you talking about, dude? I had a, I had a six pack of Budweiser and I just fucking wrote like, I love you know, it. He is just, it's just in his, it's in his breath. It's in his brain, dude. Like he was just born with this ability. Like he didn't, he wasn't taught and it so, shows. So I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but tell me that is not the coolest idea. And I can't believe scream fact. I already, I already know how, I know how they could do this, Nick. I know how they could do this. Hear me out. I mean, so you like the idea though, don't you? I was going to say, you don't have to convince me. I'd pre-order it day one. How about if they did this scream factory, do a limited run of, a thousand units do a thousand units get a nice box cover that shit and the art from his movies with john in the middle put him uh, to make nick happy put john carpenter in serif gothic black the halloween font 
for his name for the John Carpenter box set uses serif gothic black font. I know you I know you're familiar with the title of that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cover it in his movies that he's directed. No Halloween 2, Nick. I'm sorry. That's not even one of my favorite Halloween movies, so that's fine. That's, just saying. Cover it in that. Put original artwork on everything, but you can also have custom artwork where everything's kind of the same artwork, but the spines make a picture of John again on the sides, but you can flip it and have the original artwork for everything. Then, for people that don't want to have to buy that complete set, do a thousand run again of just the box. So for the people that me that own all these movies on Blu-ray already, I can put my movies in the box. So a thousand do a thousand collector set with all the Blu-rays, which I'd, quite frankly, I'd probably buy that and then do a thousand of just the box set for people to buy without the, the Blu-rays just, you could buy just the box be a smash hit. I mean, dude, because how many, uh, the only thing is they got to do Ghost of Mars. They have to do Ghost. You know they're going to do Ghost of Mars Collector's Edition. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I like Ghost of Mars a little bit. But like they have to do Ghost of Mars. They did Escape from New York too. Escape from New York out of blue. That came out on 4K. Escape from New York came out. Uh, uh, excuse me. LA. LA. That got a 4K just, but that came, that came out before a New York. But then again, LA got put out, I think, just by Warner. Or Universal. I think Universal put out... Uh, it wasn't Scream Factory that it It was just no. a big studio. Yeah, yeah. But see, that's a title right there. Like, I like Escape from L.A., with, with the exception of the surfing scene that just looks really, really cheap. I actually like Escape from L.A. I like New York a lot better. Dude, Adrian Barbeau has got some big boobies in Escape from New York. I mean, they are <laughs> just... Um, that was his wife for a while, too, I think. John no. married, yeah. John, yeah, John, John. Look, I mean, what, what a better, what a better way to end the episode than with this idea. It's a brilliant idea, and I came up with it like on the last second. Ladies and gentlemen, go to social media and let Scream Factory know, and tell them that they're gonna owe Christian a residuals check. Once send me a box set. It. Send me a yeah. box set. I'm happy. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. I'm down. Oh, man. All right, guys. This has been really fun. We're going to wrap it up with the physical media wants, needs, and desires. Is that what we're calling the episode? Yeah, you know, yeah, sure. I, we'll have to come. Oh, well, I don't know if desire. Because we had it. some favorites in there, too. So we, we would want to highlight those. The first half were like favorites. The second half was wish list. From now on, every episode, I'm going to have to bring up some kind of Halloween debate i topic with you today we talked about the producer's cut next week or next episode i'm gonna have to squeeze in uh why i think h2o is just better than what you think it is that'll, no. that'll be it so we'll go back and forth on that mm -hmm. and then why dick warlock is better than nick castle oh fuck <laughs> all right all right uh, for real. Yeah. this is this has been fun, guys. Thank you for listening to the You Need a Horror Podcast. Uh, I, I apologize. I, I'm sure you guys enjoyed this episode. I know that I did, but we'll be getting TCM done soon. I'm just going to have to figure out what's going on with his soon and get that all lined out. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, It was awesome. Last minute, man. And it, I think it flowed great. I think it because it this is something we're passionate about. So you don't have to really plan for this. You can just say, hey, we're talking physical media. And it just, it just goes, man. So, yeah. That's great. All right, guys. We love you. Have a great rest of your day. You need it. We got it. This has been a production of the You Need a Horror Podcast. You need it. We got it. Thank you for listening.